Bias in Classroom Textbooks. We're going to be talking about it on Faith and Freedom. I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. Matt, this is a story that World Net Daily ran, and it's talking about the bias in textbooks. This one is coming out of Florida with regards to some of the social studies textbooks that are being used in that state. Some of the bullet points that are listed in this article are actually shocking. It talks about the, the Jewish temple in Jerusalem contained symbolically the throne of their invisible God. Um, Jesus was a Palestinian Jew who grew up in Galilee amidst militant zealots. And it was a few followers of Jesus who spread the story about his resurrection. And then while Islamic Arab warriors rarely imposed their religion by force, Christian monks, by contrast, were busy converting peoples of Central and Eastern Europe. Yeah, that's one that j uh, jumped out uh, at me is that the Islamic warriors, quote, rarely impose their religion <clears throat> by force. That is mind-boggling. Yeah, that's the one that just simply jumps off the yeah, page. Yeah, th that that would be included in, in textbooks uh, in, in Florida. Th that is a central tenet of, of Islam, is that people either convert or they are enslaved, or they are killed. That is fundamental to the Quran. That is fundamental to, to Islam. We see, even in modern day, we hear stories of people uh, being forced to renounce their Christian faith, their Jewish faith, and embrace Islam or lose their head. That's a, a central tenet of Islam. Well, anyone who has any history of Islam or the Quran knows that that particular sentence is absolutely wrong. It says Islamic warriors rarely impose their religion by force. Well, the Barbary pirates, you know, you go down to Walt Disney in, in uh, Disney World in Orlando, Florida, and they have, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, who are those people? Who, who are the Barbary pirates? Uh, those are Islamic uh, uh, people who are, who are capturing ships of Christian nations, America being one of the nations that was considered Christian at that time, they're then enslaving these sailors and selling them back to the countries in order to finance their Islamic terrorism around the world. And so our first war as an independent nation after the revolution was against the Islamic uh, terrorists. It was the war uh, in, uh, with, uh, uh, and, and it ultimately resulted in the treaty, uh, the tr Treaty of Tripoli, to stop that war mm -hmm. under Thomas Jefferson. And our song, From the Halls of Montezuma to the Shores of Tripoli, it's talking about that first war that we fought as an independent nation. Our first jungle warfare was against the uh, Moros in the Philippines, and those were Islamic radicals that would burn American soldiers uh, literally put them on the stake and burn them. Our first war that we fought here in the continental United States uh, uh, is against the Islamic radicals that flew their planes into the uh, Twin uh, Towers on 9-11. Well, it, that's stuff you're not going to find in the textbooks because they've been scrubbed. The historical revisionists have gotten a hold of the textbooks in Florida and elsewhere. And, you know, we talked earlier in the week about how political correctness is a barrier to reality. It's a barrier to truth. If the truth doesn't line up <clears throat> with liberals' point of view and worldview of how the world should be, why then we just scrub reality, scrub the truth, and present uh, a, a revised uh, uh, truth, which is not truth at all. So you're not going to hear that. You're not going to hear in the textbooks that uh, in is under Islam, women are treated like chattel to be beaten with impunity. That uh, people who engage in homosexual behavior uh, are oftentimes executed. Uh, that that is part of of, of Islam, it, and it's the strangest thing that that uh, that liberals who embrace both homosexual activism and a radical Muslim activism that you would think neither the twain shall meet, but but it's interesting to me they both have a you know the my, the friend of my friend is my my or the friend of my enemy or excuse me the enemy of my enemy is my friend yeah. and, that, and that's what we see here they're aligning together uh, uh, against truth against Christianity and the Jewish faith so these textbooks that malign the Jewish faith the Christian faith and elevate Islam and scrub the truth about Islam. Uh, they're being pushed by, by liberals. Yeah. Here's another one, uh, Matt. The Quran permitted fair defensive warfare as jihad or struggle in the way of God. And this was how Muhammad and his successors expanded their territory. Well, 
that's absolutely not true according to history, and it's not true according to the Quran. Uh, it's absolutely not true. Uh, you know, you don't go out and defensive warfare. You don't go out and capture ships that are yeah. cargo ships. Uh, these are not warships. These are cargo ships. Uh, you don't go out and and have this um, militant, aggressive uh, front. It says also that uh, Israel is to blame for terrorist attacks by Palestinians because they were angered over the loss of their territory. You know, the fact is, uh, take a look at what we just have seen down in Egypt with the overthrow of the, uh, the leader there. And now what we have is the Muslim Brotherhood, which is where all of that started in Cairo. Yeah. You know, Al-Qaeda, Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, those are all offshoots of the Muslim Brotherhood that started in Cairo. Well, now the Muslim Brotherhood has the majority in uh, the elections. They've now said that they're not bound by the previous peace treaty between Israel and Egypt, and uh, they do not recognize Israel. The second in command was recently stating that he does not recognize Israel. It is a, an aggressor and an occupier. They are favor They just had uh, some meetings with Hamas out of the Gaza Strip. Uh, in Israel. And uh, what's going to happen over there in 2012, we're going to have to really watch it. But uh, that is really a hotbed of instability with the radical Muslims gaining power. All this so-called Arab Spring, uh, watch what's going to happen. It's going to become a, um, a winter very quickly. Yeah. Well, the, the Muslim Brotherhood, which, you know, the United States, the Obama administration, President Obama would get out and talking about, oh, we're seeing hope and change around around the world through the Arab Spring. This is pushed by the Muslim Brotherhood, which calls for uh, Islamic caliphate around the world. That is an, an Islamic world religion and world government and the uh, abolition of Western society. Uh, and, and, and it's being supplanted with this, this Muslim caliphate. And, and that is uh, considered somehow a fight, a struggle for democracy in the, in the Middle East. Well, we've talked about it before, Matt. Who are the freest Muslims in the Middle East? Where do the freest Muslims in, in anywhere in the world yeah, in live? In Israel and in the United States of, right. of America. That's right. You know, th this is just uh, bogus information here that is being put out. Uh, Liberty Council, by the way, we have the Liberty Ambassador Council program, which is designed to have a tour to encourage and strengthen your Christian faith and also equip you to become ambassadors for Israel. We'll have information that's being presented to us from Israeli government officials, military, and academic leaders. We are going on another trip to Israel, uh, May 19 through 28. That's May 19 through 28. So give Liberty Council a call at 1-800-671-1776 if you're interested in going with us on this literally life-changing experience. You can see it for yourself, what's happening. You can make your own decision. Uh, we had one person that actually went with us who was with her mother. Her mother was somebody who was supportive of Liberty Council. This other lady was more pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel. She was coming to be with her mother. Uh, well, her views were changed in that 10-day uh, trip to Israel. I mean, you can't help but have your views uh, change when you see what's really happening in Israel and you talk to the Jewish people. Yeah. Well, a as well as the, even the Palestinians. I mean, we, we talk to the Palestinians. You, you talk to them, it's a whole different ball game when you're on the ground. Well, as, as is often the case, when people see for themselves to, uh, tangibly, tact, tactically get, get a hold of, of the truth and see for themselves what is happening versus the narrative that has been pushed by the mainstream media, uh, which is pro-Palestinian, liberal in nature, or, or uh, radical progressives, they realize that uh, what they're saying couldn't be further from the truth. That's right. So this, uh, watch out for the textbooks, the social study books, the history books in your community. Find out what's being taught to your children and grandchildren. And if you find information like this, bring it to Liberty Council's attention. Call us today at 1-800-671-1776. This year we're calling uh, America's Year of Decision. 2012 is America's Year of Decision. Liberty Council is going to be right in the middle of the culture war and the battle for the future of this country and even Western civilization. Give us a call. Become a part of this ministry in 2012. Don't get discouraged by what you see happening. Get encouraged and get empowered by joining with this ministry both in prayer as well as financial support. Get information by going to our website. You can contact us and ask for the Patriot's Handbook on American Liberty. Many other resources are available at lc.org. You can make online credit card contributions 
or get our monthly newsletter, The Liberator, by going to lc.org. Go there today and make a difference.